I deleted all my YouTube videos because I didn't like them. And now we're gonna start <clears throat> again. I got into New York University, Tisch School of the Arts for an undergraduate drama program and so if you don't know what the school is it's supposed to be one of the best like ivy league private schools for acting and this is why i applied i kind of knew it was a long shot their acceptance rate is on the lower side i just thought i would take a chance and i would do it it's extremely expensive but i just you know this is supposed to be one of the best schools so i'm just gonna apply and that's what I did, and then I got in. So yeah, I'm really happy about that. Before we start, this video is not in any way me trying to brag about my accomplishments, whatever. Um, if you're gonna say that, then just go watch someone else's video. But yeah, this is just more so to help the people that may be international students or that are doing a digital artistic review for Tisch at NYU. If you don't know about the school and you're thinking about maybe applying because you like acting or if you like anything else in the arts and you want to really pursue that career, then um, for acting, some like, I guess, notable alumni, um, I think, okay, Adam Sandler went there. I think Cole Sprouse went there. I'm not sure, I think he did. I know that Camila Mendes went there. They're both from Riverdale. Going to Tisch for acting isn't going to guarantee your success as an actor, I know that. Okay, so we have like the Elsa and Anna, like voice actors. Their names are in Adina, Adina Menzel. And then I think Kristen Bell. Yeah, Chris, that's her, right? We have Alec Baldwin. We have like, you can just search it up. There's like so, so many. <laughs> you're gonna go online and you're gonna search up what program you want. So I chose drama and then I looked at it and then I filled out like the application form on the common app. So I'll take you like, if you want to go to anything at New York University, they're gonna take you to a different website called Common App and you're gonna fill out an application for the university itself. I think this is right. Then you're gonna go and you're gonna apply on Common App. So I did essays, I filled out my like basic schooling information, parents information, um, stuff like that. I had to do all of that. I had to talk to my guidance counselor. I had to get, I think I got two like teacher references. I got an extra reference. Um, and one of the teacher references was more of like an artsy reference. I know it wasn't, um, direct, directed towards Tisch as a school yet, but I still want to put that in there. They had two essays. One I did more so on why I want to go there. And then one I did that was narrowed towards why I want to be an actor. And I think the second one was optional. And <clears throat> lastly, if you want to go to Tisch um, for acting, I have no idea for the other programs. I didn't look at them. I only want to go for acting. For drama as an undergraduate degree, they do not look at your SATs. If English wasn't your first language, then you're gonna need to take a test to like prove that you're good at English or you can speak English. And then, um, yeah. So because I'm in Canada, we don't have SATs. I don't take those. I only take exams and they don't really care about that. They do ask you what your GPA is. And so I kind of had to find that out myself, but they don't ask you for your SAT scores and you don't have to take it. I already have all these other exams to study for, so why would I want to take an SAT about, you know, I mean, math is fine, but like English and like, do I have to take American history? Like, I don't think, no, I don't want to, maybe I'll cut that out of the video. Is that offensive to the Americans? <laughs> I had to book my digital artistic review. So if you are, you know, close to New York University and you can just walk in and audition, 
then be my guest. I know a lot of people do that. I also auditioned for Juilliard and I went to Juilliard because they didn't have a digital kind of um, like review audition. So I had to go there. So maybe I'll do a separate video for that. So because it was too far away and I was already gonna go to New York for a different school's audition, I didn't have enough money to go twice. Um, so I chose the digital one, but if you're not going to choose that, then you just go in, you audition, there's a different process for that. You have to book it, and so you choose the date, and so I chose early um, January, and it was kind of like, oh, by the way, I applied for early decision two. So there was early decision one, early decision two, and then regular decision. It was kind of like a slot where you had to audition if you were gonna be an ED2. And this one was my first audition that I did for any school. After I booked it, I found two monologues. So the monologues that you had to do for this school were two contemporary. And so I chose to do one um, from the play I and You, and my character was Caroline. And that was my dramatic um, contemporary. And then I did one from Almost Maine, and my character was Hope. And that was my comedic um, contemporary monologue. And so both of them were contemporary. So there was no like Shakespeare um, classical monologues. Weeks before, so I think from two weeks before, and then the one week before, and then the day before, something like that, they're going to email you telling you and reminding you that you have an audition at this time. So I remember I did an afternoon session, so mine was at two o'clock rather than at nine. And I skipped the whole day at school. I didn't go to school that day. I want to mentally prepare myself. I wanted a good breakfast. I want to run over my monologues. I want to get all my jitters out. I want to do like exercises um, that could help me and I need to get my voice ready and stuff like that. So I took the day off at school to prepare for my audition. And so the day before they told me, oh, your audition is blah, blah, blah. And they're gonna give you access to, I guess it's like online group chat. So I never used Zoom in my entire life. I didn't even know that that existed. Maybe a lot of you guys know that that's a thing and I'm just out of the loop, but we used Zoom and that's what they use for their digital artistic reviews. So I created an account and then I tested it out the day before so I would know um, where to place it so it could be a best lighting, where I could move so the camera could still see me and the adjudicator could still see me. On Zoom, the camera's kind of wonky. Maybe it was just my uh, crappy Chromebook that I used for my audition, but the lighting was really weird and it looked really scratchy. So I had like three lamps set up behind my computer so the light would be on me and then it would look a lot nicer. I logged on about 15 minutes earlier than my audition and I'm gonna guess that people were on Zoom like an hour earlier than two o'clock, which was the time you're supposed to be on. During that 15 minutes, I got to like meet everyone and they were like, oh, like someone new joined the group chat. And it was this big group chat of all the auditioners for that day, for that afternoon session. And we we're just talking about how nervous we were. Um, and we kind of talked about like, oh, when are we gonna get notified if we got in or not? Stuff like that, random questions. And then kind of like our, um, our introductionary person, like, came in to the group chat and she was explaining um, how everything worked. It's a four year degree program. She explained each year, she explained how the audition was gonna go. And she talked about the four years and the entire program. And I'm just gonna say right now, like I listened, but like I was so nervous that like it went in through one year and then just like out the other. So like now it might not help that like I don't know, whatever. We were going to put everyone that was auditioning in a separate room and an adjudicator would come to their smaller group chat. And they told me that they're gonna do it from time zones, from closest to being night, and then like least closest, like New York was like directly in the middle. And then they were gonna do it from like one side of like the world to like the other side of the world so like 
since my time zone matched up with like New York's time zone, I was gonna go in the middle. It might take a long time and you might be waiting there for a long time, but someone is gonna come, do not leave, just wait there. So that's what I did. They said you could do whatever you want. Um, you can just relax and stuff like that, listen to music, be on your phone, whatever. And I was like really in my head because I was really nervous and like a part of me was like if I'm on my phone and they see me like do your are they gonna think that like I'm not professional but like if I'm like looking over my script or whatever and my monologues and remembering stuff because I'm freaking out like are they gonna think that I wasn't prepared enough but like I just did anything that I wanted to and everything that I felt I needed to and I was playing music um, and I was singing and because that's just what I do when I'm nervous and then <coughs> My adjudicator came in and I was kind of like like putting my head down and I was like bobbing to the music, whatever. And then my adjudicator came in and they were like, hello. And it was like so shocking because like I like was in my moment and I forgot and I was like, oh, hi. We talked, he talked about um, his audition, like what he wanted because some adjudicators don't even ask you to do two monologues, they'll just ask you to do one. It doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't mean that like your chances are better or worse. And then um, he asked me to do two monologues. So I did my two and then after I did mine, he said, which one do you wanna work on? So I picked my dramatic um, contemporary monologue and then he asked me some questions about it. And another pro tip, read your plays. It really helps that these are contemporary monologues because like, some like classical plays are really hard to read like if you're gonna read the whole thing so they asked me questions and then I answered them and then they gave me a different um, like an idea and they gave me a direction and so I try my best to listen to what they said and then perform with the direction and so I did I performed and then after that this is not gonna be the same for everyone. I had an interview. I don't know if everyone is gonna have an interview, but like that also doesn't mean that they don't care or stuff like that. Don't like make up stuff in your mind. <clears throat> so they asked me um, in my interview if I wrote or if I like to write like anything, like my own plays, like scripts like that. And I told them, yes, I've written plays. Um, I'm writing or I wrote, co-wrote a short, film that is going to be out on my youtube channel probably in june i'm gonna say may or june and then um i've done like yeah different types of plays like community plays i did one for a program i did one at school so yes i've done lots of writing it's um and like i was honest with him and um he asked me if anyone helped me with my monologues um i told him that I did not get help with these monologues. They were just like on my own. And he kind of like reassured that like there is no wrong or right answer. And like looking back at it, like I was really nervous after my audition because I thought that, you know, because nobody helped me with my monologues, I was like, you know, I should have gotten help. And I did get help for my other auditions. But since this was my first one, I didn't get any help for it. And I just did it myself, but I guess that was okay because I got in. And then he also asked me what stuff I like to do other than drama. So this doesn't necessarily mean like you have to talk about stuff that's like in the arts. Like it could literally be anything. So I talked about how I like dance and singing, which are both in the arts. But you know, those are actually things that I really like to do. And then I told him about how I like to do student leadership at my school. <laughs> Who's gonna watch my videos anyways? Um, I'm like a big part of like the Canadian Cancer Society and Relay for Life that has been at my schools. I've also spoken at, oh, the light is blinding me. Um, I've also spoken at multiple different schools um, and been a part of that at different schools too. Um, so yeah, so that was like my like couple of basic things. He said, okay, blah, blah, blah. Like this is when you're gonna know and then um yeah i said okay thanks and then um i left and i felt pretty good about it but i didn't want to jinx myself because i can always tell when an audition goes bad but i can never tell when it goes like well 
So I called one of my friends um, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I was freaking out. And then he was like, like Ingrid, calm down. And then I told my mom when she came home and my sister when she came back from school. And yeah, that was basically my process. So now, after getting my acceptance letter, I got my acceptance letter for early decision two on February 13th, I think. Yeah, I think it was supposed to come February 15th, but I got mine February 13th. I did accept my acceptance at um, Tisch NYU. So that's where I'm at right now. So yeah, maybe I'll update you when I do go there after my first year or something like that. And if you want to help me and you want to know more about me or more about my personal story and why I want to go um, to Tisch or why I want to go into the field of acting and you want to help me pay for my tuition, I have a GoFundMe. Um, yeah, just because it's really expensive. So if you would like to help me, there should be a link down below. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you like this video or if you want more videos like this, or if you have any questions, my social media is down below. Subscribe, like this video. Bye! You